Well, it is finally time. After long months of pulling this video off, working on other video projects as well as school while heading into my internship semester of college, which is my final requirement, and as well as my part-time job, uh, I have been pretty busy. Like, seriously. But now is the time that after long months after the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass is completed, I thought it would be nice to go through all the tracks and place them in tier list style. I was originally going to do just Booster Course Pass, but I was like, you know what, I'm just going to rank all the tracks so that way I get my feelings out in one full video. This is how I have categorized the tier list. F tier the tracks I despise the most, D tier, tracks I don't like and know they could use some improvements, C, I don't necessarily hate the track, B, they are good tracks, A, I like the tracks, and S being the tracks I love so much that I would choose them in online or versus mode all the time. And just a heads up, this list is 100% in my own opinion and I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different than other youtubers who did a tier list like this I will not be ranking them in order this is so that way I won't confuse myself saying oh well this track is better than this track so it goes higher in this tier I won't be doing that once it is in the tier it is in the tier and I won't be going in order, what is the best track in my opinion of that tier. In addition, I have ranked these tracks on these three concepts. Scenery and aesthetics, graphics, and the difficulty of the tracks. Music will be mentioned, however in my opinion, all the music in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is really good. One final thing I need to point out is all of my points will be in 150cc mode and I will discuss 200cc if I need to. That basically sums up everything I need to cover, so let's begin with the tier list starting with F tier. The first track of the F tier list is 3DS Toad Circuit and quite honestly I am not a huge fan of this track in Mario Kart 7, and I am still not a huge fan of it now, especially in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Like, they downgraded Toad Circuit so much to go from this to this. There are times where I call it Puke Circuit because it looks like vomit. I mean, look at the grass. This grass is horribly saturated. At least, Tokyo Blur's grass looks decently to the grass's original color in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's base game. Not to mention that there is no difficulty in Toad Circuit, with the exception of two boost panels, one ramp, and a glider, which the glider can be a menace if you get targeted, but I don't use the glider because it is honestly not worth it. Next up is GBA Sky Garden. When playing this track from Mario Kart DS, I knew that this was going to be one of my favorite GBA courses despite it being flat with no difficulty. And when I saw that it was arriving in Mario Kart Tour due to the Winter Festival after the 2022 Los Angeles Tour, I was so hyped for this track. But knowing Nintendo when it comes to GB8 courses in Mario Kart Tour, minus the Bowser's Castle courses, like Bowser's Castle 4 for example, however not you Bowser's Castle 3, Nintendo likes to cut corners with these tracks. GBA Sky Garden had its corners cut. Literally. And plus, in Mario Kart Tour, it has gray stone tiling, However, in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, it has orange stone tiling, and I kind of like the gray stone tiling better than the bland orange stone tiling. 
You all kind of knew this track was going to be in the F tier, so I'm just going to point it out right now. GCN Baby Park. I despise this track for multiple reasons. For one thing, it is a compressed giant oval with two grass shortcuts. That is it. However, I do appreciate the glow up of the track that upgraded the track from one theme park to another. However, this track was chaotic from Mario Kart Double Dash, which came back in Mario Kart DS, which is still chaotic, not to mention that the DS version has cut some laps, came back in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and it's still chaotic. Especially when you're playing this track on Versus mode with custom items on hard CPUs on 200cc. Not to mention that the track is entirely anti-gravity, and don't get me wrong, I love tracks that have anti-gravity. But with tracks that have anti-gravity, especially on Baby Park, lots and lots of spin boosting. And finally is Excite Bike Arena. Long story short, it is Baby Park on steroids. However, unlike with Baby Park, it is a flat loop with two grass shortcuts if you decide to go on the edge of the grass, which could be a shortcut, but with ramps. What is exciting about this track? But the worst part is, Everybody chooses this track online. And now on to the D tier list. For all you Wii fans that love this track, I hate to do this to you, but it is honestly not one of my favorite Wii tracks, and that is Wii Koopa Cape. No joke, this track has some problems. Grant you, it was a massive hit after its arrival in Marker Wii. When it arrived in Mario Kart 7, this is where Koopa Cape suffered a massive downgrade. Mostly, the Zappers was replaced by an underwater segment with Cheap Cheeps, which is honestly a good way to utilize the underwater segment for Koopa Cape. However, they removed the river portion of the music. Then came Mario Kart Tour, where Koopa Cape has been downgraded to horrible rock textures. Removing the Koopa Cape signs while keeping Mario Kart 7's underwater features, but this time with a half pipe ramp in the underwater section. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's Koopa Cape is exactly like Mario Kart Tour's version, however they brought back the river section of the music, but the underwater section is babyfied by removing the cheap cheeps but implemented anti-gravity to the pipe section. How in the hell is this anti-gravity? A Mario Kart modder by the name of Mayro did a video where she removed anti-gravity in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. In her Wave 5 anti-gravity less video, the pipe section functions the same as it was with anti-gravity. Next up is the first city track in this video, Tokyo Blur. Oh gosh. I <laughs> hope my Dad doesn't watch this video. <laughs> he would kill me if Tokyo Blur would be lower on this list. But, <laughs> no joke in all seriousness, Tokyo Blur would have been higher, like C tier, <laughs> if it weren't for the damn graphics. <laughs> The reason why I put my brought my dad into this, he lives in Japan. <laughs> dad, if you're watching this video, I I'm sorry, but it's my opinion. <laughs> and this track is simple with little difficulty. The only known difficulty are the thwomps. But they can easily be avoided if you're careful enough. However, the scenery is really good. Not the best, but it's really good. Next up is Water Park. 
I get it. It's a mushroom cup track. But for how simple it is, I wish that there was more with Water Park. Heck, I would not have called it Water Park. I would have called it Sub Coaster because that is the ride you are riding on. The scenery is great, Don't I'm not going to lie. But we are just riding on that one ride the entire time we are in that water park. Like, are we ever going to ride something else? Like, a couple of rides from the background of water park? And not to mention that there is an easter egg when you enter the underwater merry-go-round, but thanks to the distorted music when you hit underwater, you won't be able to hear the easter egg, which is the merry-go-round music from Mario 64. If this was a bit louder, this track would have been C tier at most because of the noticeable feature. Next up is N64 Calamari Desert. I was originally going to put this in the C tier list, all because of it being flat and basic, plus looking a little bit similar to Mario Kart 7's version of Calamari Desert with the glider panels, minus on lap 2 where it's a giant train wreck. However, after watching Metal Smith's ranking video, he claimed how empty the track is. I was going to say this was going to be 100% my opinion, but Metal Smith has a good point. And I wasn't thinking about that. Sean Rays, one of my favorite Twitch streamers, reacted to Metal Smith's video about like a couple of months ago, how he claimed that there should be a Wild West town somewhere in Calamari's desert so that way it doesn't look empty. I know this because I was there to see Sean react to the video. Next up, the generic SNES Rainbow Road. When I first saw this track arriving in the original Mario Kart 8 DLC on YouTube, I was like, there is no way they brought this Rainbow Road back. This Rainbow Road has been retroized in GBA 7, the two Mario Kart 8 games, and now in Mario Kart Tour. This is the most appearances of any Rainbow Road in Mario Kart history that I bet some of us are probably going to be saying they wasted a track slot in the DLC. It has a generic layout with star thwomps that shakes the track, and you can easily bean corner yourself if you take the turns too tight. At least the scenery is decent, unlike in Mario Kart 7 and Tour. And now onto the C tier tracks, and this is where the list is starting to get really long. And by how long this video takes and the amount of editing I had to do, I am asking you to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell as that will help me out a lot. The first track of the C tier list is SNES Mario Circuit 3. This track is so damn basic. So why didn't I put this in the F tier list? Why did I put it in C tier list? Well, it is a classic fan favorite Mario circuit that many people played in Mario Kart Wii as well as the original Super Mario Kart game. However, the track added some additional blocks and flags, but those are there for decoration. In all seriousness, it did bring some variety to the track, and I love variety and dimensions when it comes to tracks, and the music is still a classic as always. The next track is GBA Sunset Wilds, and not gonna lie, this track came so damn close to becoming an F tier track. Why you may ask? Well, let's play a classic meme that I found on YouTube. Hurry Spongebob, I think it's getting... However, after much debate, this is as far into the list as I'm going to get all because the scenery, graphics, and music are a big upgrade. And even the mud actually looks like mud. And the Shy Guys are a great obstacle. But I will not go any f higher all because of the never-ending sunset. The third track is Wii Coconut Mall. Now just because this track is a fan favorite, there were some problems with this track 
since it was featured in the direct. First off, the track was super desaturated. But before the first wave was launched, Nintendo added some saturation to Coconut Mall and it looks a lot better than how it looked like in the direct. However, that is not the main problem. The main problem were the cars. The cars didn't move at all when the first wave was launched, which caused a bit of a backlash. When it arrived in Mario Kart Tour, the cars actually moved. When the second wave was launched, the cars moved, but only in time trials where they don't move. Only to preserve the expert staff ghost. Really? Nintendo, if you knew there were going to be some backlash, why did you have the cars stationary in the first place? Next up is 3DS Rock Rock Mountain. Now overall, I do like the track. The anti-gravity portion works pretty well as well as the falling boulders. However, it is more of the graphics that kind of killed this track of being a B tier as it was just a wide track with lots of gliders. And the worst part is the first glider. If you lose your glider after going off the first glider ramp, you are basically falling like Loki from Thor. I have been falling for 30 minutes! Which was also what killed this track from being a B tier. Next up is the first ever Tour City track in Mario Kart Tour, New York Minute. This track just felt forgettable to me. All because of the amount of appearances it made in Mario Kart Tour. All four routes of New York Minute never made a reappearance until the Autumn 2023 Tour, which was four years after the addition of the first route of New York Minute. In terms of difficulties, there really isn't that much difficulty with the exception of the Goombas and the Water Geyser. In terms of scenery and aesthetics, I love tracks that are taking place at nighttime, and New York Minute is one of those tracks that are taking place at nighttime, because it brings out a whole different vibe than tracks being taking place during the daytime. Even the graphics aren't that bad despite it being a Wave 2 track. Next up, Ice Ice Outpost. I really like the concept of the track being played in a glacier-like valley. However, the way it plays out almost makes it like a Mushroom Cup track, even though it is an original DLC track. There is no difficulty minus the three shortcuts and the windy paths in the anti-gravity section. If there was more to Ice Ice Outpost, like you are actually driving on the ice minus the shortcuts, then this would be would have been a B-tier track, in my opinion. Next up, a tour city track with a weird name, Bangkok Rush. I honestly appreciate the scenery of Bangkok with its sunset and fireworks in the distance, and the multiple landmarks it uses such as the infamous Giant Swing for example. However, there is just no difficulty with Bangkok, and it was all thanks to the inky piranha plants from Tor being removed in 8 Deluxe. If they weren't removed, this track would have been B tier. Next up, N64 Toad's Turnpike. I originally put this in D tier. However, the more that I play it, the more that I actually enjoy racing on the track. However, there are two things I don't like about Toad's Turnpike and that is the traffic. The traffic just doesn't feel that menacing to me to call it difficult, unless I play it in 200cc. Then that's a different story. But I'm also not a huge fan of the track layout as it is a simple figure eight. But at least we got this figure eight and not this figure eight. But I like the added on city in the background of the track so it makes it feel like you're in a city unlike from the original N64 version. But you do have to appreciate the fact, and even though it isn't the best option to use it, the anti-gravity portion, as like I said, I love tracks that have anti-gravity. But another problem I have is the gliders. Sometimes the gliders just don't work on Toad's Turnpike. Like once you enter a glider, you immediately lose it. Which is why I avoid the gliders at all costs on Toad's Turnpike. Next up, 
SNES Donut Plains 3. I like the concept of turning the original Donut Plains 3 from being a flat and boring racetrack to something that actually has some depth to the track, making it look like something found in Super Mario Bros. 3, with the castle turret after the second turn, and transforming the track to let you drive underwater was a phenomenal touch, because early Mario Kart games wouldn't let you do that. At least the mud doesn't slow you down unlike Super Mario Kart, but for a basic yet simple SNES track, had to put in C tier. Next up, Wii U Mario Circuit. Just like with Toad's Turnpike, it is a figure eight going around the castle. Man, why can't it be like Mario Kart 7's Mario Circuit where you drive in the castle? The only Mario Circuit to do so. But you have to admit the way the anti-gravity was used in this track was spot on. The first track in the Nitro Cup row where you're driving upside down. And that's something that I loved about the anti-gravity in this game, being able to drive upside down. The track also is not that difficult as the only obstacles that you have to avoid are the piranha plants in case you take the turns too tight, as well as the three Goombas from the first turn of Mario Circuit, as well as the giant Goomba Towers, which I find it funny that they brought the Goomba Towers into Mario Kart. Next up, GBA Mario Circuit. Just your average circuit track. The only things that I like about the track is the anti-gravity portion, the glider, and the Ultra Arm Easter Egg that is used to help raise the anti-gravity portion to its position, which can be seen in one of the track preview scenes. The only track that does that, and I do appreciate that, but to me, it's just average. Even if there are oil spills as the obstacles. Next up, GCN Dry Dry Desert. Now with Dry Dry Desert, it actually looks like your standard desert track. However, there are some things missing in the track that I wished weren't removed. They include the Dust Devil and the giant piranha plant when you fall into the center of the giant whirlpool of sand. If they didn't get removed, this would have been B tier at most. But I do appreciate the effort of adding the falling pillars as well as adding an oasis to the track, despite it being called Dry Dry Desert, not Dry Wet Desert. Next up is DS Shroom Ridge. Now this track isn't all that bad of a Wave 1 track. Sure the grass isn't grass, but like I said before it's been a problem for all Wave 1 graphics. The main difficulty are the cars, which I would find ways to get myself total whenever I have to deal with them on the first, second, or third turns of each lap. And I do appreciate Nintendo adding a glider as well as an air shoot shortcut on the track. However, just like with Calamari Desert, it feels a bit empty to me and a bit out of place, like the random pipes and signs. And this track is meant to be one of those city tracks like Moonview Highway and Mushroom City, but on the highway. However, the background just feels a bit empty in my opinion. Next up is the first Tour Nitro track that appeared as an 8 Deluxe track first before arriving in Tour later, that being Sky High Sunday. This made my Wave 2 ranking video a bit outdated. That's because I have grown to have neutral feelings to Sky High Sunday as I used to back when it first arrived in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That is because it is another generic oval shaped track. But this time, this oval has a split path. However, I shouldn't diss Sky High Sunday like that so hard because I love ice cream. I hope this still works. I love it so much, I almost choked on it. Despite the track layout, I always find it funny how you're doing spin boosters on the railings. That is all I have to say about Sky High Sunday and why I am neutral to the track. However, Mario Kart Tour did Sky High Sunday better than how Mario Kart 8 Deluxe did. Whoa, 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 hold up. Hold up!
Are my eyes deceiving right now? Video credit. Nate Dog 19? But that's me. And right behind me is Mario Kart Tour content. So why is there Mario Kart Tour content if I retired back in February? Newsflash! Mario Kart Tour is coming back to this channel. I kind of miss the Mario Kart Tour community ever since I retired back in February. And so I decided, you know what? I bet a lot of you miss Mario Kart Tour content on this channel. And so I'm bringing it back. I have started a brand new account. Started fresh. And I am ready to bring Mario Kart Tour back onto this channel. So, that is the major announcement I have to make. Anyway, I'm going to grab my soda and get on out of here, continuing on with the tier list. And finally in the C tier ranking, we have Merry Mountain, the very first ever tour Nitro track. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Merry Mountain. I love the Christmas season. However... The track layout of Merry Mountain, it's a bit too simple. There are no obstacles, and there's hardly anything challenging with the track. But at least the nighttime scenery and the aesthetics with the train make up for Merry Mountain. And the music is very festive as well, considering it is a Christmas-themed track. But it's more of the track layout that I had to put this track in C tier. Something I forgot to mention, this video is a two-parter. So, if you want to see the second part, click right here, and I'll see you there.